Welcome back to the number one PS3 channel on the platform, my guy. In this one, we're taking a deep dive in the world of multi-man. I will cover absolutely every aspect of the app and explain it as if you're a three-year-old. By the end of this video, you will know everything you could ever want to know about multi-man, and you'll be able to comfortably use it for your dodgy jailbreaking needs. Be sure to show your boy some love by hitting the like button and even a cheeky subscribe. No more waffling guys, let's get into this video. So, what are Multiman's main functions? Obviously, it is mainly used as a file manager or for downloading ISO games. But did you know there's so much more to this all in one app? Starting with the web column, this is where you'll be able to download other homebrew apps and other stuff that you can find on the Brewology website. Installing homebrew apps this way won't require a USB, however you will need another homebrew app called HPR Network that will essentially add a plugin to your web browser that allows for downloading of pretty much anything. Also on the web column, you can find other fun stuff such as custom themes. And if you're someone who uses their console as a movie player, then you should get your movie and media player all set up. You can also find other homebrew apps you might need such as the PS2 placeholder app or Retro Arch. Speaking of retro, we move other to the next column. This is where you will do all your emulator related activities. You will have all of your PS1 and PS2 games here in neat folder, and you can even install these games directly from a USB, all without having to exit the Multiman app as it has direct access to the PlayStation's HDD. You can also play PSP games on a PS3. Using certain emulators, it's actually insane. Over on the games column this, where you will do all your PS3 related activities, it makes it very simple to install all of your ISO games that you might have on a USB. Another instance where it would be extremely useful is if you had a damaged disc that you wanted to play. You can directly copy the contents of the disc to your HDD and the game will work just fine. The next columns are the videos, music and pictures columns. This does what it says on the tin pretty much. It acts as a hub for all of your media items and keeps it neat in its own specific section. Now, over to the settings column, this is where things get a bit techy. Unless you know exactly what you're doing, you shouldn't really be changing much inside here as it can literally break your console if you do it wrong. At the top, you will be able to see your system information. This will tell you all sorts, such as what firmware you're on, whether or not your console can have a custom firmware installed, or how much free HDD or memory space you have left. I won't go through each individual setting, but you get the gist of it like being able to change date and time on your console or changing your theme for Multiman, but it also has the more experienced level settings. The last column on the Multiman app is named MMCM. This is where you do the big boy stuff, like installing bypasses to get back online, installing various mod menus or cheats and so much more. This is essentially where you install everything you could ever need for your PS3 games like modified saves for example. On the MMCM column you can also restart or shut down your console from Multiman which people say is the safest way to turn your console off. This application truly does do it all and it would hard to imagine having a jailbroken console without it. So what common issues can people run into while using this app? Games not launching via Multiman is quite a common issue people have. To fix this, you normally need to load the game through Webman Mod instead. However, having both Webman and Multiman installed at the same time can come with some major technical problems in itself. This also applies for games that launch but then freeze a minute or two after. Another common issue is the black screen issue when launching Multiman. This issue normally happens because you either have an outdated firmware or an outdated version of Multiman. You must always make sure to install the latest version. So it's always worth checking if you're that guy who is having black screen issues. Another issue I've heard quite as bit is people saying their PS2 games don't work. And when they launch them, they get a copyright error. This is because you have not activated the console as the primary. You can do this by first signing in, then going to account management settings, then click on system activation. From here, then click on game. And you should see the option to activate the console. You will find your PS2 games will now work and you will not have any copyright issues. That is pretty much everything you need to know about the Multiman application. You can't really do anything without it. And that is what makes it by far the most essential homebrew app ever. If you have any questions, or if you're having an issue that I didn't cover, then please leave a comment, and I will try get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you have enjoyed this one, guys, and can take something away from this. 
I would highly recommend you just avoid messing too much with the settings in Multiman too much, as I have heard several horror stories about people destroying their consoles trying to do custom firmware actions on a hen jailbreak. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe as the Webman version of this will be coming soon, as well as the step-by-step -step guide on installing the new 4.91 hen and custom firmware. Cheers guys, take care and peace.